There can only be one winner, and you're looking at it. Let's go. So we are in the final round of a regional tournament. We are both X and one, which means we only have one loss each. One more loss, it's over. He has a crowd of friends watching, which is making me nervous because they could accidentally reveal a play to him and interrupt the duel. And if they interrupt the duel, there's not much we could do because if we call a judge afterward, they're gonna what? Tell them to leave after they already helped him. So I'm very much afraid of that. So what happened is after many turns of the duel, he, he has a dragonfly and let's say he's not so good on life points. So I'm in a situation where I go to make my play. I go for a big special summon play. He discards max C and he draws. So I'm in a situation where I have no way to win unless I resolve my heavy storm. I need to heavy storm my own card Flip up Starlight Road, negate the Heavy Storm, summon a Stardust Dragon. Now I'll tell you how to stop this. So what happens is, I Heavy Storm, so just like this, I go, Heavy Storm, Starlight Road, negate, summon, Stardust Dragon, and attack for game. He also drew a Maxi. That was an unwinnable situation for me. That was very stressful because had any of his friends told him, saying, hold up, hold up, he, you know, uh, wait, wait, wait for a response, man, wait. And then he'd be like, what do you mean? How, how can I respond to the heavy storm? I have nothing, I have no back row. Well, if he knew that effect Valor would block the heavy storm, then I would lose. So the fact that he let my resolutions go without responding, and also drawing with Max C, making it too late, was how I was able to summon a Stardust Dragon in a situation that I should not have won. So to show you how this works, Chain Link 1, Chain Link 2, negate an effect that would destroy two cards I control, which is my own effect. But if he chained the Effect Veiler, the Effect Veiler would be Chain Link 2, and then the Starlight Road would be Chain Link 3. Starlight Road negating Effect Veiler, Effect Veiler is not destroying two cards I control. The heavy storm is so had he chained effect valor in the situation that we were in he could have stopped the stardust dragon and i had no way to win there was no way to win it was a really stressful situation where i had to heavy storm he had to not respond i had to chain starlight road summon the stardust i had to hope that he didn't know the ruling and this is a player that's very good he's he tops tournaments left and right he goes to nationals pretty much every year. I don't think that's really that big of a deal when it was more prestigious to go to nationals. But by not knowing the ruling of chaining effect Veiler to block the Starlight Road, chain link block the heavy storm from the Starlight Road, there's no way to win. So that was an unwinnable situation that happened to me in a regional. Thank you so much. Now, allow me to show you a popular cheat that was happening in the TCG, and a lot of players could not combat this cheat unless they knew about the cheat. The cheat was all about a card called Drop Off. When your opponent draws for their normal draw, your opponent discards one card they just drew. People were teching this card to instant win duels in the TCG. How? So what would happen is they would set their Drop Off, and then it would be my turn. I draw. And what do most players do in the TCG after they draw? They shuffle their hand. So what, what happened to the newly drawn card? It's all the way on the left now. It's gone. He doesn't know where it is. And he or she will then say, hold up. I have drop off. We are in an irreparable game state where he intended at least he says he wanted to use drop off you call a judge and the judge says that's a game loss we have no way to know what card was the drawn card and he purposely waited for me to shuffle this did not happen to me this was a popular cheat but this is how it work they draw you wait for that shuffle and people out of habit they shuffle their hand let's talk about another cheat here is another way that people would cheat in the TCG. Now, 
this was a hard thing to combat. Even if you knew they did it, you needed witnesses. You needed, hopefully, to capture it, capture it on video. Pretty much the only thing to really stop this is if they've been accused of this more than once, then the judges will catch on. Or you need a judge to be watching the duel. Otherwise, if they save this play for you and no one's been calling a judge on them, no one else is catching them, and you're the first one to cap capture them do this, you're screwed. You're going to lose. So what they would do, if you don't know what core does, core on normal summon, add a cyber spell or trap from your deck to your hand. So they would activate a search. Cyber dragon core, activate, search your deck for a fusion gate. Fusion gate is not a cyber card. How did he search for a fusion gate? Well, with sleight of hand, they add the fusion gate and they say they searched a cyberload fusion. I search this, but you see from my end, you see clearly it's already in my hand, but that's not how they're presenting it to you. So if I'm playing against you, I throw the fusion gate into my hand. I throw from the deck to my hand. Then I shuffle my deck and I throw you the deck and you go, hold, hold, hold up. What, what, what did you search? I search fusion gate. Uh, I mean, cyberload fusion. And, but you actually search for fusion gate. And what are you gonna do? It is he says versus she, she says, you call a judge. I think he searched the wrong card judge. And I'm gonna go judge. I searched a uh, cyberload fusion. I swear. I don't know what this guy's thinking. He's just accusing me of cheating for no good reason. I clearly searched a cyberload fusion, but I searched for a fusion gate. Now, what was used here was actually Future Fusion. This is the card that people were searching because this card was disgustingly good back in the day for a fusion play. I'm about to show you the number one most popular way to cheat. This is the number one way to cheat, okay? So let's see if you catch it. I'm gonna play Cyber Dragons. I'll describe what happened if you don't capture it, okay? I'm gonna activate Cybernetic Fusion Support. I'm gonna lose half my life points. I'm going to activate my skill, summon Proto Dragons onto the fields. I'm gonna summon my core. I'm gonna activate it. I'm gonna search for a Cyberload Fusion. I'm going to activate Cyberload Fusion, banishing these with the effect of the Cybernetic Fusion Support. I'm gonna summon a Cyber End Dragon. I'm also going to activate Cyber Load Fusion. I'm going to return these back into the deck, and I am going to summon a Rampage Dragon. I'm now going to go in the battle phase. I'm going to attack. What did I do wrong? Well, Cyber Load Fusion can only be activated once per turn. You call a judge. The judge is not going to DQ me. I'm going to say, my bad, my bad. Okay, that was game one. You caught me, but someone else wouldn't. Now let's do it again. You caught me game one. Congratulations. Now we're going to game two. And I didn't get game lost. All right, it's game two. Congratulations. You caught me game one. I'm going to activate cybernetic fusion support. I'm going to lose 2000 life. I'm going to summon my proto dragons. It is turn two, by the way. I'm going to summon my cyber dragon core. I'm going to search for a cyber load fusion. I'm going to Fusion Gates. I'm going to activate Fusion Gates. I'm going to banish the fields to summon a Cyber End Dragon. I'm going to Cyber Load Fusion. And I know this is not optimal, but cheaters don't play optimally. They just cheat. So we summon a Chimera Tech Dr Dragon. I'm going to activate its effect to perform a double attack. I'm going to mill two Cyber Dragon cards. I'm going to go in the battle phase. I'm gonna attack, you're gonna Sphere Kribo, whatever. I'm gonna attack, and I won. And you signed the slip. And I'm on to my next round. Well, I was not allowed to attack with the Cyber End Dragon. I cheated. Because if you read the Cyberload Fusion, monsters you control cannot attack for the rest of the turn except the Fusion Summon Monster. So you might be thinking, oh, this is so obvious, I would capture all of this. This gets exhausting. When a cheating player continually do, does what's called soft cheating, 
what is soft cheating? It means usually if you cap, if you catch me in the act, I go, my bad. We coo, we coo, don't call a judge. All's fine. Even if you do call a judge, the judge will be like, listen, man, he made a mistake. He forgot that he couldn't attack. Honest mistake. People don't play Yu-Gi-Oh during the week. They play once during the weekend. An honest mistake. So what a cheater does is they soft cheat throughout an entire weekend on top of each other, on top of each other. Even if they get called out on it, they normally never call a judge. This is the number one way to cheat in Yu-Gi-Oh. Just continually soft cheat. What's hard cheating? If you get caught drawing extra cards, you can't say, my bad, bro. I didn't know I was supposed to draw an extra card. That's obvious. That's a DQ. That's hard cheating. You get caught hard cheating, you get DQ'd. But soft cheating, like I just showed you, activating a card more than once per turn that it was only once per turn, attacking when I was not supposed to attack. Now, what happens if you call a judge after the fact and you already signed the slip? It's usually you can't go back. That's it. You got cheated, you lose. And it happened a lot. People would go back to their friends after a duel. They would describe what happened. Their friend would be like, well, dude, you got cheated. There's nothing they could do. There's no recourse. So a lot of people, and this is not supposed to be an anti-TCG video, it's just an example of whenever we prepared for a tournament, I would tell Gia all the ways to get cheated. If, for example, the most popular deck going into a tournament was Dragon Rulers, who knows about Dragon Rulers, a popular way to summon a Dragon Ruler was with a, a small dragon. So you could discard this in one dragon to special summon a blaster dragon from your deck. You would summon a blaster dragon. Don't worry about its effect, it's 2800 but it cannot attack. It cannot attack this turn. There would be people that would attack with their dragon rulers. So it's small details like this, where if your opponent it carries themselves well, they're confident, I'm gonna burn her, I'm gonna summon, I'm going to attack, and you go, okay, what are you gonna do? That is what would happen in the TCG consistently, the small little restrictions. And you know it yourself, you're playing Duel Links, you go into a play, but then the game stops you, and you're like, oh, I didn't know that I couldn't do this. So that's the essence of a soft cheater, is that they pre pretend to be unknowing. It's a mistake, because it could be a mistake. And you're gonna look like a jerk for calling me a cheater when I made a mistake. But I'm purposely making these mistakes throughout the entire weekend. And that's the number one way to cheat in TCG. All right, here is an unstoppable cheat. So what I'm gonna do here in the TCG, and this did happen, people have done this, multiple people did this. They would activate Inferni Launcher. They would discard the Inferni Archfiend. Now Launcher could summon the Archfiend, and then you search your deck for any card, you go through a loop, you, you win. So let's say I hatrinated your back row first, then I discarded the Archfiend. Then I summon Beetle. That was a problem. The Archfiend doesn't work unless I have no cards in my hand. The Launcher does not summon unless you have no cards in your hand. So what do I do? I set my Beetle. Because this leads to a lethal play. I summon the Launcher, I make the Archfiend, I grab another Launcher, I... Synchro Shokan into this, I send this, I summon them back onto the field, I search for another launcher, I could then make a charge warrior, draw a card, and then discard that card, pop a card in the field, launcher, make an Animaru after I popped your monster, and launcher, summon the Archfiend in case I didn't beat you, I'm gonna grab the barrier, and then you lose, you scoop. You can't ask for the other set card, you can't do that, that's illegal. You're not allowed to ch check their other card. At the end of a duel, you don't reveal your cards. And I just won, and there's nothing you could do about it. And I set a beetle in my back row, which is an illegal set. That is what people were doing when Infernity was top tier. Now, I remember this, I promise you, I have other people that could tell you that the story was true, that the opponent actually had something to stop it. So with the set freaking beetle, and this guy, like, this may make the story seem even more ridiculous. This guy was wearing a cape. This guy 
literally, he was, this was a, Gia, what, what was the, it was a cash tournament for how much money? $5,000, I think? A 5k tournament. A 5k tournament. The caped duelist <laughs> is playing a meme deck. His deck sucks. But that's a perfect opportunity to cheat when you're playing against someone who's memeing, having fun. You have to understand with Duel Links, you could play a thousand duels a week. In Yu-Gi-Oh, you invest in the cards so that you could hang out with your friends on the weekend and you could potentially, in seven days, an entire week, only get to play one match and get knocked out. And it, it possibly in a single elimination, then you're done, or you only play a few duels. So this guy, playing with the cape, he dusts tornadoes. Target a set spell and trap your opponent controls, destroy that target. It's a beetle. What does he do? Scoops. That's it. He was going to win. It, it didn't make any sense. He literally, the, the Inferni player was winning and he was going for the win or he was going to win next turn. But because he dust tornadoed the freaking beetle, he scooped. He had a bunch of set cards. He flipped up Dust Tornado. He didn't reveal the beetle, but he scooped right away. And the reason why we know it's a beetle is because not only is that shady AF, how, why would you scoop to a random Dust Tornado? But then basically his friends or whatever said that, yeah, that's what he has done and has been known for doing. So he basically scooped because a random back row destruction hit the beetle. There you go. That's one way to stop it. Now again, I want to preface this with do not be afraid of TCG. TCG is supposed to be fun. You're hanging out with friends and also play competitively. It's good, but sometimes really bad things could happen. And my best advice for you is to always have people around you that you trust in, your friends. Just try not to be alone because there are people that are willing to cheat and they're going to get you. So what happened here is I would ask to look at your graveyard. Now, a lot of players, maybe even yourself, you would go, oh, I don't let people touch my cards. I will fan out the graveyard and say, all right, keep everything on the fields. Don't do anything else. But you're going to have people that are not as experienced. They're going to let your opponent pick up the entire graveyard. Even myself, I let my opponent pick up the graveyard, especially at a local. It's not a big deal. But if you're playing against a cheater and I'm looking at your graveyard, I could grab one of the cards and yoink it. What happens after I yoink your card? Well, I throw it on the floor, whatever, it's gone. I delete this card, this card is gone. So let's say it's just gone from the game. So what do I do? It's not on their deck, it's just gone. I have it, I stole it. Judge. Can we check his deck? I think his deck is 39 cards. And the, the opponents will be like, what, what, look, dude, why, why are you? Yeah, I, I just, I'm looking at his deck size. I looked at his graveyard. It looks like he's playing an illegal deck. Judge comes. Oh, dude, you have a 39 card deck. That's a game loss. And if I took a valuable card, not only did I game loss him, I also stole his card. And I can't give this card back because it's how I just won. I stole a card out of their graveyard. Now they have an illegal deck and they didn't catch me steal their card. And then that's just a, a way that people have cheated in the TCG. And it's pretty hard to stop this. What can you do? Now you're missing a card. You're more concerned about the card you lost, what you're missing. You, you're, you're thinking, oh no, did I make a mistake? How dumb of me? Did I overside deck? You're not even thinking that your opponent just stole your card and then you lost, and then that's it, and then your day's ruined. So Morphing Jar is limited to one, and what it says is, on flip, both players discard as many cards as possible from their hands. So what you would do is you would play Book of Moon, you would play Book of Taiyu, you'd play 80 Changer. What you do is you get Morphing Jar on the field, you flip it up, you flip it down, you flip it up, you flip it down, you flip it up, you flip it down, your opponent decks out on the first turn, you win. Because you deck your you deck out both players on the first turn, and then you end your turn, they have nothing to draw, they lose. So how do they cheat? They palm the freaking card. They give you a 39 card deck or a 40 card deck and they play 41. And then 
When they draw for their turn, it's in their hand already. Well, how'd I catch it? The only way I freaking caught it... Wait, where'd my Animaru go? The only way I caught it is... I counted his deck while shuffling, and I don't do that every time. But because I knew he was playing Morph... I, so what happened is I lost game one to Morphing Jar. Maybe he cheated me game one, I don't know. Game two, while Pile shuffling his deck, I count his cards. I go, just in my head. And I go, 39. What I do? I scooped up his deck. Judge! No Morphing Jar in the deck. In his... <laughs> no Morphing Jar in his deck. 39... You can't give the deck back. You got... You have to hold on to their property. Steal his card! You have to steal his cards. You have to hold it and get a judge. Throw them in the ocean! And if your opponent's bigger than you, they're gonna beat you up. Because you're holding their deck. <laughs> and they want to put the Morphing Jar back in. So, I auto one, And they got DQ'd. Don't be afraid of the TCG. Most 99% of my experiences in the TCG were pleasant, lovely, I loved them, I would still play in the TCG. If there was a local in my area that was active enough to play Yu-Gi-Oh! But, in the end, those are my stories on ways you could get cheated, on ways you could prevent the cheating. That's just some examples of what happened in the TCG. Let's go!